Hello, dear listeners. We warmly welcome you to this enlightening session. Our focus for this session will be Exodus chapter 27 from the New International Version of the Bible. This chapter, rich in symbolism and meaning, offers us a glimpse into the details of the tabernacle, a sacred space of worship and communion with the divine. These verses will strive to unravel the deeper significance of these sacred instructions and their relevance in our lives today. Each verse is a stepping stone guiding us towards a greater understanding of our faith and spirituality. So, prepare yourself for a journey of discovery and introspection, a journey that promises to enrich your spiritual understanding. Without further ado, let's immerse ourselves in the divine words of Exodus chapter 27. We begin with the first eight verses of Exodus chapter 27. Build an altar of acacia wood, three cubits high. It is to be square, five cubits long, and five cubits wide. Make a horn at each of the four corners, so that the horns and the altar are of one piece, and overlay the altar with bronze. Make all its utensils of bronze, its pots to remove the ashes, and its shovels, sprinkling bowls, meat forks and fire pans. Make a grating for it, a bronze network, and make a bronze ring at each of the four corners of the network. Put it under the ledge of the altar, so that it is halfway up the altar. Then make poles of acacia wood for the altar, and overlay them with bronze. The poles are to be inserted into the rings, so they will be on two sides of the altar when it is carried. Make the altar hollow, out of boards. It is to be made just as you were shown on the mountain. Take a moment to let these words sink in. They paint a vivid picture of this sacred altar, its design and the specific materials used. An altar of acacia wood overlaid with bronze. Horns at the corners, utensils of bronze, a grating with a network of bronze and poles for carrying. This altar isn't just a piece of furniture, it's a sacred space, a place for offerings and worship. The instructions are clear, detailed, and precise, highlighting the importance of adhering to God's design. It's not just about creating an altar, but about creating it in the exact way God commanded. The altar is hollow, made of boards, and is to be carried on two sides, indicating its portability and the transient nature of the Israelites' journey. The verses we just read describe the altar of burnt offering and its utensils. We continue on to the next set of verses 9 to 19. The next section of Exodus chapter 27 brings us to a detailed description of the courtyard of the tabernacle. The courtyard, as we will see, was an essential part of the tabernacle, a sacred space where the Israelites could come and worship, then make a courtyard for the tabernacle. The courtyard was to be 100 cubits long for the south and north sides, with curtains of finely twisted linen. This was not just any courtyard but a sacred space. It was a place where the Israelites could come and feel the presence of God, a place where they could worship and offer sacrifices. The south side shall have curtains of finely twisted linen 100 cubits long for one side. The curtains were made of finely twisted linen, a material that was both beautiful and durable. These curtains were to provide a barrier, a separation between the holy space of the courtyard and the outside world. On the west end of the courtyard, there were to be curtains 50 cubits wide. Again, these curtains were made of finely twisted linen. The east end, towards the sunrise, was also to be 50 cubits wide. The entrance to the courtyard was to be 30 cubits wide and made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. The posts for the courtyard gate must be 15 cubits high and their tops were to be overlaid with gold. The gate was to be a grand entrance a fitting entryway into such a sacred space. Moreover, all the posts around the courtyard were to be banded with silver, and their hooks shall be of silver, their bases of bronze. Silver and bronze, precious metals, were used throughout the courtyard, adding to the sense of sacredness and beauty. Finally, the courtyard was to be a hundred cubits long, fifty cubits wide and five cubits high, with curtains of finely twisted linen and bases of bronze. The dimensions of the courtyard were specific and the materials used were of the highest quality. This was a place designed with great care and attention to detail. All the other articles used in the service of the tabernacle, whatever their function, including all the tent pegs for it and those for the courtyard, were to be of bronze. Every single article used in the service of the tabernacle was to be made of bronze. From the tent pegs to the bases of the curtains, everything was carefully chosen and crafted. With these verses, we get a vivid picture of the courtyard and its curtain. This was a space of great significance, 
a place where the Israelites could come to worship and feel the presence of God. The instructions given were detailed and precise, showing the care and reverence with which this sacred space was to be created. We conclude the chapter with the final verses, 20 and 21. As we draw closer to the end of this chapter, we delve into the divine instructions about the lamp. Let's read, Command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light, so that the lamps may be kept burning. In the tent of meeting, outside the curtain that is in front of the testimony, Aaron and his sons are to tend the lamp from evening till morning before the Lord. This is to be a lasting ordinance among the Israelites for the generations to come. These verses teach us about the importance of keeping the lamp lit, a symbol of God's eternal presence among his people. The Israelites were instructed to use clear oil of pressed olives, a testament to the purity and sanctity of God's dwelling place. And with that we have completed the reading of Exodus chapter 27. Having read the chapter, let's take a moment to reflect on the key points and themes. Exodus chapter 27 is rich in symbolism and detail each of which carries a profound message that resonates even today. Firstly, the chapter emphasizes the importance of following God's specific instructions. The detailed description of the altar, the courtyard, and the oil for the lampstand are not just mere architectural guidelines. They are divine instructions, directly from God, meant to be followed with precision and reverence. This teaches us the value of obedience and respect for the divine authority. The altar, as described in the initial verses, is a place of sacrifice and atonement. It is made of acacia wood and overlaid with bronze, symbolizing strength and endurance. The altar is a constant reminder of the need for reconciliation with God, a theme that runs throughout the Bible. The courtyard, with its curtains of finely twisted linen, represents the separation between the holy and the profane. The priests, chosen by God, are the only ones allowed inside symbolizing their sacred duty and the sanctity of their mission. The oil for the lampstand signifies the presence and guidance of God. It is to be kept burning perpetually, symbolizing God's eternal presence and His constant guidance in our lives. The pure olive oil used for the lampstand also symbolizes purity, reminding us to strive for sanctity and righteousness. This chapter, with its intricate details and profound symbolism, provides valuable lessons for our daily lives. It teaches us the importance of obedience, the need for reconciliation with God, the sacredness of our duties, and the constant presence and guidance of God. May the divine wisdom of these words guide us in our daily life. In the 28th chapter of Exodus, this chapter holds a significance that is both historical and spiritual. It's a vivid depiction of priestly garments and their intricate details, symbolizing deeper truths. Understanding these messages can enrich our perspectives and reveal timeless wisdom. So, sit back, relax, and let's immerse ourselves in the beautiful words of Exodus 28. The Lord said to Moses, begins the 28th chapter of Exodus, setting the stage for a divine command of great significance. The Lord's words reverberate with a purpose, a calling that is both sacred and profound. Bring forward your brother Aaron, along with his sons from among the Israelites, so that they may serve me as priests. Here we see a clear mandate, a divine selection made with absolute certainty. Aaron and his sons are not merely chosen, they are consecrated, set apart to serve in a role of unparalleled spiritual importance. The Lord continues, Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. These are not just any clothes, but garments imbued with divine purpose meticulously crafted to reflect the glory and beauty inherent in their holy function. The Lord is not only concerned with the spiritual readiness of Aaron and his sons, but also their physical presentation, underscoring the importance of outward manifestations of inward sanctity. The Lord then instructs Moses to speak to all the skilled workers, those whom he has filled with the spirit of wisdom, their task to make garments for Aaron that will consecrate him setting him apart for the Lord's service. The emphasis on the skill and wisdom of the workers reflects the weight of the task at hand. It's not a job for just anyone. It requires individuals touched by divine wisdom, capable of crafting garments worthy of a priest. These garments are to be made using gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen. 
The choice of these specific materials speaks to their value and rarity, further emphasizing the special role that Aaron and his sons are about to undertake. In conclusion, the Lord provides a list. These are the garments they are to make, a breastpiece, an ephod, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. Each piece carries its own significance, a topic we will delve into as we continue our journey through Exodus chapter 28. Make the ephod of gold, and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. Now, this wasn't just any garment. The ephod was an intricate piece of religious attire, worn by the high priests of ancient Israel. It was a symbol of their sacred duty, a physical representation of their divine connection. This ephod was made of the finest materials, the gold and the colored yarns, the finely twisted linen. Each component was meticulously chosen, each carrying a significance of its own. The gold, precious and enduring, represented the eternal nature of God's commandments. The blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, vibrant and rich, mirrored the beauty and diversity of God's creation. The finely twisted linen, soft and pure, was a symbol of the priest's purity and dedication. Crafting the ephod required a high level of skill and precision. It was a laborious task, filled with reverence and respect for the sacred duty it represented. Imagine the artisan, painstakingly weaving each thread, each strand of gold, each piece of yarn. This was not just a garment, it was a work of art, a testament to the devotion and commitment of those who served in the temple. The ephod wasn't merely ornamental, it was functional, designed to carry the urim and thummim, the sacred objects used for divine guidance. Two shoulder pieces were attached to the ephod each adorned with a precious stone inscribed with the names of the sons of Israel. This served as a constant reminder of their duty to represent the people before God. The ephod, in all its glory, was a tangible symbol of the high priest's divine role. It was an emblem of the sacred connection between God and his chosen people, and attached the two gold rings so they fastened the shoulder pieces of the ephod to the front of it. The ephod, in its intricate details and careful craftsmanship, mirrored the complexity and beauty of this divine relationship. Fashion a breastpiece for making decisions, the work of skilled hands. The breastpiece, my friends, was not merely an ornament, it was a tool for divine guidance. This intricately crafted piece was made of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen. Now let's delve into the significance of the twelve precious stones set in gold filigree. Each stone was engraved with the name of one of the tribes of Israel. Thus, every time the high priest wore the breastpiece, he carried the twelve tribes of Israel over his heart. Imagine the weight of that responsibility, the honor, and the immense symbolism. The stones were not chosen randomly, each one had its unique beauty and significance. They were arranged in rows, each row containing four different stones. The first row was ruby, topaz, and beryl. The second row was turquoise, sapphire, and emerald. The third row was jacinth, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row was chrysolite, onyx, and jasper. Each stone, unique in its beauty, represented the uniqueness of the twelve tribes of Israel. But the breastpiece had another significant element, the urim and thummim. These were placed in the breastpiece and were used for making decisions. The urim and thummim were mysterious objects, their exact nature and use are lost to history. However, they were believed to be a means of revelation. When a decision had to be made, the high priest would consult the urim and thummim and receive divine guidance. The breastpiece was not just a piece of religious attire, it was a symbol of unity. It represented the high priest's responsibility toward the twelve tribes of Israel, and it was a tool for communication with the divine. It was a constant reminder that the high priest's role was not just ceremonial, but deeply spiritual and crucial for the guidance of the Israelites. Thus Aaron will always bear the means of making decisions for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. The breastpiece was a critical part of the high priest's garments, symbolizing the sacred role he played in leading and making decisions for the Israelites. Make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth. As we continue our journey through Exodus chapter 28, we delve into the other priestly garments, each one rife with symbolism and significance. The robe of the ephod, a long garment worn under the ephod, is described as entirely of blue cloth. This color, a rich deep blue, signifies heavenly grace. At the hem of the robe, pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn are interspersed with golden bells. These bells chime with the movements of the high priest, a reminder of his continual service to God. Next we encounter the turban, a simple yet powerful symbol of dedication and consecration. On the front of it, fastened securely, 
is a plate of pure gold inscribed with the words, Holy to the Lord. This inscription serves as a constant reminder of the priest's holy purpose. Finally, we have the tunic, sash, and the undergarments. Made of fine linen, these garments are symbols of purity and righteousness. Worn closest to the body, they remind the priest of the sanctity of his office and the purity required of him. Each garment, from the ephod to the undergarments, is meticulously crafted and thoughtfully designed. They serve as visual reminders of the priest's holy purpose, his dedicated service, and the divine authority bestowed upon him. They will be on Aaron and his sons when they enter the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place so that they will not incur guilt and die. Make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it as on a seal, holy to the Lord. As we draw the curtain on Exodus chapter 28, we behold a grand tapestry of divine instructions, meticulously woven with the threads of sacred symbolism. This chapter has unfolded the profound significance of the priestly garments, not mere adornments, but a physical embodiment of their holy office. Each stitch and gem, each fold and color serves a higher purpose, a testament to the sanctity of their roles. From the ephod to the breastpiece, from the robe to the tunic, these garments were designed to consecrate Aaron and his sons, setting them apart, elevating them from the earthly to the divine, from the mundane to the sacred. And so we are reminded that the vestments were not just garments, they were a tangible representation of divine service. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants, a timeless symbol of their eternal covenant, their unbroken bond with the divine. Let's bow down and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for your word and the wisdom it provides. As we delve into Exodus chapters 27 and 28, we are reminded of your divine instructions and the significance of the tabernacle in the lives of your people. We thank you for the rich symbolism and deep meanings that guide us in our faith journey. Lord, bless each viewer who has taken the time to join us in exploring these chapters. May your Spirit illuminate their hearts and minds, deepening their understanding and drawing them closer to you. Grant them insight and revelation as they reflect on the importance of worship, sacrifice, and priesthood as described in these passages. We ask that you continue to guide us all in our study of Scripture, helping us to apply these ancient truths to our modern lives. Let us be a light to others, sharing your love and grace in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you so much for watching our video on Exodus chapters 27 and 28. If you found this content enriching and insightful, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. Your support helps us continue to bring you more content that explores and explains the profound truths of the Bible. Blessings to you all.